Hello everyone, and welcome again to the Spike R channel. And as you can tell, this is not Spike R, but rather it's Spike R's cousin, who also is named Spike. Apparently everybody in that bear family is named Spike. But Spike R is not available, he's off doing other things, but he will return. Anyway, this time I wanted to talk a little bit more about the overlapping generations. And the reason is, I watched the JW Broadcasting episode again, where they were talking about overlapping generations, and I realized I had missed things. And part of the reason is because when I find things to be so intellectually non-stimulating, I typically have a hard time paying attention to them. And with the JW Broadcasting, it is quite obvious that they have gone into the level of completely and totally absurd. So I wanted to talk again about the overlapping generation, because this notion is basically offensive to our ability to reason. In fact, the governing body is relying on the fact that they don't want you or they don't allow you to think about what they teach to get you to believe the overlapping generation. Now, when this doctrine first came out, I believe it was 2010, at the time, I was a thoroughly indoctrinated elder, and I had been serving as an elder for a number of years. When this doctrine came out, my thought was, wow, the governing body no longer even cares about making it look like their teachings are scriptural. And that was when I was thoroughly indoctrinated. So now that I'm actually thinking for myself, I can tell just how foolish and how offensive to our intelligence this doctrine actually is. And I believe I made some of these points, but the JW Broadcasting put Nathan Knorr in the overlapping generation. And the problem there is that Nathan Knorr was born in 1905, so he was very much alive to witness the events of 1914. So that actually puts him in the generation that saw the events of 1914. But according to the society, he is now part of the overlapping generation. Why? Because he wasn't anointed when those events took place. Now, what they're doing here is stretching to absurdity the ge definition of the word generation. Nobody outside of the society has ever used generation to mean a group of overlapping people who have been around at the same time. That's not what a generation means. Generation if you think about current definitions, and even the past definition, I showed in a video how Matthew chapter 1, verse 17, allows you to put a number of years on a generation, which came to about 40. In our current definition of generation, you could say that a generation is probably between 20 and 30, 40 years, depending on who is defining it and how they use it. But for example, we have a generation of baby boomers. They were a specific group of people that were born between a specific time period, and they're still alive, but people born today are not considered part of the baby boomer generation. After the baby boomers, you had Generation X. They were born during a time period, they shared some experiences, and Generation X is very much so still alive. Then you had, after Generation X, you had Generation Y, which now they're somewhere between Generation Y and the Millennials. But you see, there's at least three generations, Baby Boomers, Generation X, and the Millennials, none of which have passed away completely, but before the Baby Boomers, there was another generation that's still alive. So that's four generations. And that generation may have been the ones that saw 1914, but actually was probably the generation before them. So for my own life, the generation of my family that saw 1914 was my great-grandparents. So I have my great-grandparents, then my grandparents, then my um, parents, then myself. So I'm at least the fourth generation removed from the generation that saw 1914. And I'm old enough to have children that would be in high school, depending on when I started. So that would be a fifth generation since the events of 1914. And that's the way we define generations. So this idea of an overlapping generation would essentially mean that I'm in the same generation as my great-grandparents because my life overlapped with them by a considerable period. My great-grandparents are no longer alive. Or you could say I'm in the same generation as my grandparents by the overlapping generation because my grandparents are still alive. They've lived to be um, in their 70s and 80s and 
you know, there that's that's good. But by the definition the society is trying to use, I am in the same generation as my grandparents. Now they try to add special definitions to their overlapping generation. So what they do is they take it out of the realm of time and they put it into their theological bias. So for their overlapping generation, you had to be anointed when 1914 happened, and the overlappers had to be anointed and alive when the first generation was still alive. So they've imposed restrictions on the generation that are totally and completely absurd, and they basically remove all meaning from the generation. So what they're trying to tell you, basically, is that Jesus was lying to his followers when he said, this generation will by no means pass away. So in the context in which Jesus was speaking, he was saying the generation of people to whom he was speaking would not pass away until the destruction of Jerusalem. And that most assuredly happened. Jerusalem was definitely destroyed within the lifetime of the apostles to whom he was speaking. So, the situation now with the teachings of the society is that they have gone into complete absurdity, complete and total absurdity. Now, this presents a very real problem for Jehovah's Witnesses. Because Romans 12.1 says that for your worship to be acceptable, that you have to worship God with your powers of reason. So that being the case, if you don't reason on the teaching of the generation, you literally cannot worship God acceptably. But this also presents a bigger problem for Jehovah's Witnesses. Because they are taught, when they don't understand something, that they have to wait on Jehovah. So basically they're taught any time they can't reason something out and understand it, they have to wait. So that teaching of Jehovah's Witnesses is in direct conflict with the way that God actually wants to be worshipped. And that is somewhat problematic. On top of this, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that the Bible is um, inspired of God and that equips you to serve God in a way that's acceptable and to understand what God is trying to teach. So that being the case, the teaching of wait on Jehovah is once again going against what's found in the scriptures. So, this really helps you to understand that the only way in which Jehovah's Witnesses are able to maintain their system of belief is by the mind control that is exerted on them by the Watchtower. Now, I'm not saying this as a conspiracy theorist, but I'm saying this as somebody who experienced that mind control for over 30 years. There were countless times where I, things didn't make sense to me, and I waited on Jehovah. Some things I waited on Jehovah for decades about. For example, in my time, the teaching was that the generation that saw 1914 would not pass away, meaning a literal generation as everybody understands it. But after that generation passed away, well, the society suddenly had to come up with a new understanding. So, I sat there wondering for a long time, well, why isn't the end coming? I got out of elementary school, I got out of junior high, I got out of high school. I actually went to college, I got out of college, I'm well into my career. The end hasn't come, why is this? Well, reasoning upon that teaching helps us to see that it's not a true teaching. So, I just wanted to make some more points about the overlapping generation and what an absurd teaching it is. And actually that teaching is not only an insult to the intelligence, of Jehovah's Witnesses, but more importantly, it is an insult to God, and it goes directly against how the Bible tells you to worship God. So that's my thought for this time, and Spikar's cousin says thanks for watching, and see you next time.